Hi guys, welcome to the hangar. We are just south of Salt Lake City, Utah, where we have completed building a unique custom built carbon cub with a couple of mods to do an unbelievable event. And sitting right next to me, I've got Luke, who is gonna pilot this little beast. And Brad here from Cub Crafters, who helped put together parts and pieces. And then myself, Mike Beatty, who just likes to build wild, unique flying machines. So we're gonna talk a little bit about what we had to do to make this all work. There is a lot of physics, math, and engineering that goes into this to do a stunt of this proportion. And not only to do it, but we're doing it on the other side of the planet. And we are doing it in the most unique place I have ever seen to attempt to land a cub like this. Yeah, and you called it really well, Little Beast. You know, <laughs> what, what you created, you know, we, we had a great, great platform from Brad. And then what you did to the aircraft, uh, yeah, I can hardly believe how well it flies. And uh, yeah, super happy to have support of both of you guys for the project we came up with. And uh, we're going to make it really special. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so these guys, Cub Crafters has a uh, history of partnership with both Mike. Um, you know, we've collaborated on some projects before. We've collaborated with Red Bull on some projects before. And uh, so the Red Bull guys called and said, hey, uh, we want to take and land a carbon cub on top of the only seven star hotel in the world in Dubai. Can we do that? And my head kind of spun. <laughs> and I thought about it a little bit and I thought, you know what? Yeah, we probably can do that, but we're going to need some help. So. We brought, in, uh, we brought in some of the vendors that we work with that helped us with some of the equipment on this airplane. And I called Mike up. I was, I was sitting up at, uh, at Mark Baker, president of AOPA's house, at a luncheon, and I'm sitting there going, okay, how are we gonna get this done? How are we gonna get it done in the timeline? And there is only one guy in the world I could think of that, uh, that could do this and pull this off, help us do it, and that was Mike. So I called him up. And his head spun for kind of 10 minutes <laughs> yeah, but... before he said, you know what? I'm really too busy. I don't have time for this. Uh, my life's too crazy, too hectic, but this is just too awesome not to do it. <laughs> so let's do it. <laughs> That's exactly right. I, I can't emphasize enough. I talk about all the time how crazy my life is and I don't have one more minute, one more second. Everyone thinks that they can get a five minute meeting out of me and I don't have any more five minutes in existence, including in my sleeping in the middle of the night. And he told me, hey, we got this crazy project. We're gonna try and build a plane in a several months. It's gotta be epic. It's gotta be this, that. Do you wanna do it? And it was just like, I can't fly five minutes. This is not happening. And he says, well, let me tell you about it first. Red Bull, Dubai, on top of a building, on a little teeny circle. <laughs> and I was like, Crap, I, I'm gonna make time, so that's what we had to do. <laughs> you, you, you can imagine my surprise, you know, I've been watching your uh, YouTube channel for years and uh, having seen Draco, having seen Scrappy, uh, I've been with, uh, with Red Bull as an athlete for uh, seven years now. And, uh, you know, we, we did crazy stuff. We flew formation under bridges in Warsaw. Uh, we landed the uh, My X2 on the, on the wooden pier in Poland, which is national treasure. Uh, and to be allowed to do stuff like that, that's really great achievement. And then we, we came up with idea, how do we beat landing on a wooden pier? And, and, you know, we came up with the idea of, uh, okay, let's, let's do a helipad. What helipad do we do? Which one is the most famous in the world? Okay, the one in Dubai, actually, Wojtek was sitting there. He, he was the one who suggested the uh, Dubai. We gave the guys in Dubai a call. And then uh, it was like, okay, so, you know, I have the EX2, but that's, uh, that's gonna be a little bit risky with the stock plane having 600 feet elevation from the sea level, high temperature. So we went to Brad, we went to the factory, we did testing of the uh, NGX first, because you know, I was really afraid of the, of the tail hitting uh, with, with the tail with aircraft and the NGX in the end turned up a little bit heavy to do that. And then uh, we started in a huge brainstorm. And when Brad called me one day and he said, we've got Mike Patey on board. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that happened. And uh, yeah, and it didn't disappear until now. And you know, after two days of testing of the, of the little beast, as you called it, um, 
you're gonna see guys the takeoff and the landings and it, it really blows my mind <laughs> awesome well as, as people you. people know i mean you know if you go back and you think about you know jim richmond the founder of cub crafters it was his vision to take the cub platform and make it lighter make it stronger make it faster and that's that innovation's the success that Cub Crafters is built on. We're surrounded by Cub Crafters airplanes here. But uh, Mike's taken it to a whole new level. And this airplane behind us, I mean, it's a stock Carbon Cub SS. It was built at the factory. It was flown around for several years in private ownership. And, uh, but we've made some mods to it that uh, make landing on top of a building, which no one should do <laughs> on their own. <laughs> A little safer for Luke. So why don't you tell us about the mods we did, Mike? Yeah, so we started out with uh, some of the key components. There's two things we have to do to get on and off this smallest, this tiny helipad on the other side of the world. We need to be able to first land on it. That creates some engineering challenges. We have about how many feet total do we have exactly on that top of that it's building? It's 28 meters, so just over 80 feet. Yeah, about Probably. 80 feet. Yeah. And, if, and if you're a cub flyer and a tail dragger flyer, you know that when the plane is this long and the tail is way back there, you really don't have 80 feet. It, you just lost a giant chunk of the landing pad with the aircraft itself. So the first thing we need to do is say, how do we make this fly slower? So let's make it lighter. Well, how do you make a plane that's already one of the lightest, greatest performing aircraft in the world stock do a little bit better? And that meant going to titanium all over the place. So we started out by changing things. We added swap bolts for titanium bolts. We did custom made bolts. We swapped landing gear for titanium landing gear. We had custom tires made to lighten up the tires. Now those tires aren't gonna get a million landings like a traditional tire, um, but they're four pounds lighter aside. So we went and we stripped weight everywhere we could. And then, here, here too. Here too. <laughs> I'm on a diet. <laughs> we had uh, meetings that uh, were just about every week. And one of the things we talked about was like, hey, I'm out here chasing grams, ounces, trying to make this plane lighter. I'm like, you just need to cut back on food a little bit because <laughs> with what we're paying per pound to lighten up a plane that's already light. More carbon, less carbs. This, this, guy, this guy needs to be <laughs> drinking water and nothing else. So, uh, but we went through all the things we could do. And then when we said, okay, now we've got the plane down significantly lighter. We've stripped things out without risking any safety. Nothing we did could cause it to be less safe. So we need to be as strong or stronger with less weight. And one of the things we went to next is, okay, once you have to give up a large portion of your landing pad because the tail would be off the back, now how do you get it stopped? And that changed all kinds of things. So right off the bat, we knew the brakes that were on it are plenty. They have enough to throw you over the front of the aircraft and you, the last thing we want to do is nose it over and then fall off the other side of a building. So 600 feet. 600 feet. If anyone could recover from that fall, it's going to be this guy, but there is a building in the way. So we don't want to play that. So we said, well, putting bigger brakes on won't actually stop you faster when you have brakes that can send you over. So we said, we need to engineer a way to stop faster and then put bigger brakes to do it. That meant a complete rearrangement of the normal mass moments in the aircraft. So we started out, Brad, myself, Luke, the entire team, and we came up with this plan. And that was for me to take the wings and remove the fuel tanks. The heaviest mass moment in an aircraft is up in those wings and they are the furthest distance you can get from your rotational fulcrum of your tire so when you hit the brakes all that fuel moves to the top and it pushes forward mass in motion stays in motion so we have all this weight up top that's trying to throw the plane on its nose so we made custom fuel tanks the tanks don't even exist anymore they're gone and the tank is now below the location of a pilot down low in the back so we moved the weight to the back of the plane and to the bottom of the plane. And did you notice the difference on your test line today? <laughs> <laughs> I landed with my feet on the brakes and I could apply the brakes a lot more aggressively than, than I could before. And the tail, of course, the, the aircraft was level, but the tail didn't want to rise up as, as it did with the stock aircraft I, uh, I had for the testing. So. That was another one of the, the modifications. That we couldn't be happy with how it worked. So everything we did was about moving the weight down and back. 
Um, keeping the plane within its absolutely safe, normal category flying limitation CG envelope. We did not need to change Cub Crafter's predetermined CG envelope. So this plane can be rearranged, put a passenger in, load it up, put fuel in it, fly it long distance still, and be able to be within normal, safe recovery weight and balance limits. So that worked out really well. One of the other things we want to do is how do you strip out that extra couple of pounds? Well, we made lots of things removable. So this aircraft, though we still have creature comforts, we didn't go way over the top because this plane does need to fly around the country. It needs to do this event. We still want airflow. We still need cooling vents. We still need ducting. We still need heaters up yep. here in the mountains or you're going to freeze to death. And so we left all the Cub Crafters creature comforts in it, but we made it so that some of the items that put on a lot of weight can be removed specifically for the event. So there's actually two fuel tanks now. One is a long cylinder tank that's in the back. We talked about one of the most important things about that is when you're doing a stunt like this, there is lots of movement. And one of the most critical movements when trying to hit a spot is your ability to slip the Speed. aircraft, skid it in. As soon as you skid a plane with a normal conventional long wing tank, that fuel can move if you're at your minimums. We want to be at minimums. So we made a cylinder tank with a cone bottom right to a pickup and you can skid, slip, point straight down, point up, do whatever you want and that fuel is gonna be at the bottom which allows us to run the minimum legal requirement for the FAA and all governing bodies for the, the minimum flight. But when we're in that minimum legal limit, we can still do very aggressive maneuvers, not run out of gas. So it was not just moving the tanks, it's reshaping them and redesigning how they go in. And we did some of them today. And yeah. <laughs> the aircraft license. Uh, uh, <laughs> you, did. So, you guys are going to see the footage. He was doing some amazing things in this airplane today. And again, I mean, we know the Carbon Cub is capable of landing in an 80 foot distance. It's proved that at Valdez and stole competitions all over the world many times. But this is a little different scenario. We're going to be in Dubai. It's going to be hot. Density altitude is going to be high. The airplane needs to be extremely controllable so Luke could absolutely hit the spot with confidence. And we need to be able to come to a stop quickly with safety margin. So this is about increasing the margins of the airplane, an airplane that's already capable of doing this sort of stuff. And Mike's done an amazing job in watching Luke fly the airplane today. I'm totally confident that we're gonna be 100% successful in Dubai in making this thing happen. Well, yeah. th thanks to you guys. You know, and uh, also, as you said, we, we've seen carbon caps landing way shorter than what we have available. But adding the DA, adding the turbulence coming off the, uh, of the building, uh, adding the fact that, you know, we need to have the tail way, way clear of the edge of the helipad, that really makes me confident that what we did here is going to make a safe and spectacular event. Yeah. This building creates horrible rotors. Anytime you put an object and just stick it out in the middle of the air, on the ground, we all know, every one of us that fly in the back country, when you got nice flat ground all around you, that wind's predictable. It's stationary, it's coming at you, it's on a nice flat terrain. When you've got rollers, you got heels, you got a cliff on one side, it is absolutely reckless when you start having the winds pick up. So. It's the ability to land on a disc sticking out in midair with a building with giant columns coming off of it that are going to roll the air. So we can't have heavy winds right. or it's going to be dangerous and you could come right up on the pad and it could push you into it. Yeah, it could roll you off it. So th there's those things. So we need to be able to do this with mild winds. Yep. And that's what it takes to make it happen is a lot of modifications. So now let's, uh, we've landed on the helipad. We're sitting there, we gotta take back off again. We, exactly. uh, we, we did a couple things to, uh, to help that too, Mike. Yeah, so, <laughs> great. So a couple things we had to do. One of them, of course, we already did with the brakes. Um, we needed to have more braking power because we gave this plane more horsepower. So this aircraft already comes out at 180 horsepower and for race guys, it may not sound like much, but when you have a plane that just weighs over 900 pounds, um, that's a lot of horsepower for a lightweight Cub. Well, we added nitrous to it. Now, 
that's a, an area where you really need to be careful. Uh, a lot of us here have played with nitrous, raced, drag raced, hill climbed, everything. And nitrous is one of those finicky beasts that if you do it wrong, come back and bite you. And so though we could add a lot more nitrous power to it, we just wanted to give it a nice, safe, additional shot that's reliable and we could repeat it consecutively without risking the engine. And so we really put in a lot of modifications to help make sure that the mixture's right, uh, timing's been corrected, and that the system is automated for you so that it's something you don't need to think about. And you tried it today, how did it feel? First of all, thanks for making it idiot proof. <laughs> <laughs> it was so easy to, to adjust the mixture setting to the right correction, uh, to the right settings. And then as soon as I hit the uh, full power, it launched, but like, it, it, the initial launch was better than my aerobatic aircraft. And the climb rate, it was, yeah, the deck angle was like in the Edge 540, uh, which, <laughs> which is a hot rod. You know, I did not expect something like that from a, from a stall aircraft. But I think I had like a good 40, 45 degree uh, pitch. From the ground it was impressive. And, and, and it would just kept pulling, kept pulling and the, the, the aircraft kept coming like a homesick angel. So yeah, it was really, really impressive. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I, I have to admit, like, usually I'm building these radical airplanes and then um, I ring them out and I go fly them and I go test them and I stall them and do everything upside down, inverted, everything you can do. And it was really fun to actually build a plane specific for a task and push all of its engineering and design limits for that objective and still be a daily flying aircraft. This aircraft's gonna go do trips all over the world safely and, and events and air shows and stunts, but to then actually step back and build it and then bring in one of the greatest aerobatic pilots there is and Red Bull as a team and say, here's what we've done and now go show me what you can do with it and go. that was just awesome it go was have fun go, go have fun <laughs> it was really and, and different fun I had. yeah it was <laughs> it's really impressive aircraft uh what, what what we did there it's uh we're gonna show it off at some air shows uh you know we, it's not just built for dubai we're gonna show it off uh, throughout the next year and uh come and see us because it's gonna impress you well, yeah. and, and that's a good point because i mean a lot of specialty airplanes even within the stall community, are purpose-built for one specific purpose, and they do that one purpose well, but it's not an airplane you'd fly every day in the backcountry. This airplane, the way it's set up right now, it's just at home, it's at mile high in Idaho, or up at your cabin strip, you know, up here in the, in the Wasatch in Utah, as it's gonna be on top of this hotel in Dubai, as it's gonna be at Valdez or at Oshkosh. Um, it's still truly a backcountry, totally capable airplane, uh, we just increased the margins for, for this one little fun, uh, fun event we're gonna go do across the world. <laughs> yeah, so now one of the other things we had to do to get off of this building is not only give it an extra shot of horsepower with nitrous. Gotta turn that horsepower into thrust. We need to turn it into thrust. So on a typical aircraft like this, the length of the prop may be 82, 83 inches, sometimes 84. And then the pitch is gonna be around 42, 44. Stock Carbon Cub SS is an 80 inch diameter prop with a 50 inch pitch. So that stock, some I'm, I always think a little more in some of the competition. We, yep. we give a little more RPM to it, maybe put a 44 pitch on it. We knew after doing some testing with a strain gauge I have, we hook it to a truck and we pull on it. We knew that the prop actually stalls a little bit at full power. And if we actually added nitrous to it, it wouldn't increase its takeoff roll, it would decrease the takeoff roll because the engine could speed up fast enough to fully stall the blade and add distance to it. So you can't just add horsepower, right. there's more to it. So fortunately, you look behind us, a company called Cato stepped up and said, you know what, we wanna participate and build you guys a custom prop for this custom little beast. And uh, they did. So we made the prop quite a bit longer. It's 86 inches long and we flattened it out to a 38 pitch. And this prop allows it to get a little more higher RPM, and the length is what gives it the bite. When we have enough length, then we get it converted to thrust. And we did some of that testing today on the ground at this high altitude, and boy, did it work. It's pulling great, but having such a big prop is also great help as uh, it helps me to disarray. 
as I approach my touchdown zone. I keep looking where the wheels are, where the touchdown zone is. I approach and when I go idle, you can feel the deceleration way better. That's that's a really good help. Yeah, it's like air brakes. The, yeah. Air brakes with a big yeah. prop. So I decelerate with the prop, shut the flaps off, uh, flaps up, and uh, yeah, then I have a great braking there. Yeah. So horsepower, propeller, bunch of other things we don't have time to get into right now. But let's talk about safety, though. Let's talk about safety. So. We do everything we can to increase our margin of safety, shortening our takeoff roll, shortening our landing run. But the thing we really don't want to make a mistake on here is landing somewhere in the middle of the pad and hitting the brakes and coming up at the edge where you can then fall off the backside. That would be the worst case scenario. We would rather land short and come up even on the nose, if we had, it's, those accidents can happen and fall over and just stay on top. The last thing we want to do is go over the backside. So we talked about what is the safest way to get onto the smallest pad when going over that side is not an option. And that is to really hug the backside of this helipad. And if we're going to have a place we want to hold it tight, it's on that end, which means we slightly increase our chance of the tail of this aircraft hitting the edge of the helipad. And, and when you're trying to hit within a foot or two of target yep. to make this work, if you miss it by a foot or two, that may not be Luke. That literally can be the slightest change in wind can change from making a perfect landing to actually striking a hard corner. Now, in the back country, do we really care? No, because what ends up happening is if you land a little short, your tire bounces in some weeds or a big rock you didn't want to hit, but you don't destroy the aircraft. What we were worried about is if we came in and it struck the edge of a pad, it would fold the inbound tubes, belly tubes of the aircraft and the plane would no longer be flyable. So right here, we made a tail strike bumper. This goes and passes through several of the truss web members' contact points of the main structural load of the tail of the aircraft. If you were to strike the tail on exactly one of the V truss webs, it may not cater, crater in, but it would dent the tube enough that we are structurally no longer a sound aircraft. This is designed to take a extremely hard impact. And beneficially, we've found through a lot of testing that if you put a few extra pounds on the very tail of the aircraft, it increases our braking ability. It's the lowest point of the plane and helps that over center turn so we can brake faster. So we decided to beat this up. It is probably as strong as a full steel bumper on a pickup truck. However, it only weighs eight pounds. It is 100% carbon fiber with the exception of a giant, thick, solid, fiberglass member right down the middle. It's a solid rod. Mm -hmm. That rod is embedded into a honeycomb carbon fiber this way, triangulated with another honeycomb, another honeycomb, and across the bottom, finish off the triangle so that if there is an impact, this sits on the aircraft like this, in this zone, it would try and spread the triangle out, but you can't spread the triangle when you've cross-webbed it with a bunch of carbon fiber. So this distributes the load so that all the load transfers to these two main bars on the cub, which is the outer frame, strongest point, and then distributes between all of its contact points and never allows it to hit or dent the structural member. So this is gonna go on. I'm not gonna prove how cool it is and how well it works, but <laughs> good to have it just Don't in hit case. it, <laughs> but if you hit it, no, I would rather you hit this then go long. So we aim for the perfect target, and if the wind give us a, gives us a bad play, this is our backup plan. So there is our little belly tail bumper. <laughs> and it's beautiful. There's also some little things, kind of just fun things. If you were to make contact even way up here at the front, obviously we want it to glance out, and then the back is a very different shape. This is to bridge where the tail comes down so that if you were to impact it and slide on the building, it would then jump the bolts and mechanisms that would have, it, the plane would hook onto, 
and just skip down the spring and then just let you just roll back up onto the building and quite frankly, just fly right back off. So that's what this is designed for. It's just backup, everything we can do to be safe. All right, so now we've got a plane that can take off. We've got a plane that can land short. We've got a plane that can hit the brakes and we got a plane with some safety margin in case we come up and make contact with the side of the building. Now what do we need to do? Now we need to make it look good. <laughs> <laughs> we need to make it look good. And you know what, I, I gotta and tell you guys. It's a good looking plane. Right? <laughs> it looks so good. And you guys, I'm gonna brag a little bit about my son because I'm a proud papa and if you can't talk about your kids, I don't, I don't know, I'm just so excited. My son, <laughs> he's my youngest, his name is Dex. And he started a little rap company wrapping cars and, and he's quickly become known as one of the best rap guys there is. And uh, he wrapped this airplane in the Red Bull grandest fashion. And I couldn't think of a cooler project for my son to be able to come help on a plane that I built for Red Bull and to have him participate. And my other son, Dylan, um, he's my oldest boy. He built this whole plane with me and my best friend, Ron Clark. And between Ron Clark, save the day. Ron is just like my anchor in aircraft building. I, I wouldn't build planes without my right hand man and he's the best. My son, Dylan, my son, Dex. That team and Red Bulls, absolutely gorgeous, wild design. This is what we ended up with. And I, I have not been more proud of a build and a cool looking aircraft. This is it. Absolutely. <laughs> you, you and your team, uh, like I have my carbon bike uh, back home wrapped as well, and he did an exceptional job. It's uh, it's a really good one. So yeah, if you need a plane branded, <laughs> give him a call. Give me and my son Dex a call. He he knocked it out of the park. Well, remember, what was it? I called you in late August and said, hey, we got this project. You said, I'm on board, get me an airplane as fast as you can because we don't have much time. And I don't know what a typical, you know, Mike Patey project tapes, but I think I had you an airplane by mid-September because I had to go buy an airplane for this. And uh, so we're sitting here and it's uh, it's early January with a finished airplane that didn't show up here in this hangar until middle of September. Yeah. Yeah, the timeline was just nuts and no one could have pulled it off and it, Obviously, took the whole entire Patey team uh, <laughs> to get it done. So, Mike, thank you. Yeah, you're, you're welcome. I, I couldn't be more honored and excited. And and I had those one one other team member, Josh Kelson. He's one of my best friends. He's usually doing the edits of my videos, so he'll probably put this together and I'll put it on a YouTube. Josh works on the videos, and uh, and occasionally he builds the airplanes with us too. But I tell you what, on this one, on this timeline. Well, I'm also building a house and running my companies all at the same time. So this 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 Red Bull plane was uh, built after dark. <laughs> With a little help from Red Bull. <laughs> no, this aircraft was done late hours. We did a bunch of all-nighters and it took the entire team. And uh, my buddy Josh, he stepped in as well and came out and said, I'm gonna let someone else do a little bit of editing. And he got dirty and did carbon fiber and wiring and everything with us. So I was it's sitting great. at home watching all the episodes of, of your house build and I was thinking, how do you find time to, to still build this plane? <laughs> <laughs> at night. So, and uh, you guys, uh, I gotta throw a shout out to a whole bunch of other people that helped out. Uh, Garmin came in and uh, got us the most beautiful screen to put in it. Um, a, a guy, David Buckwalter, David, thank you. He's on the other side of the country. He flew out here and said, Mike, start getting the wiring already inside the plane. Uh, I'll draw up a panel for you and he'll come out. He came out and we wired it up together and got it done. Um, Cairo propeller stepped up. So one of the other things we had to do in stripping down the weight um, was the lights that were in it were heavy and we still needed lights. We still need to be legal. And Watt came up and stepped up the plate and Watt does amazing bright lights. And they sent some lights and said, here's a way to save a few more pounds. So. It still has lights, and but they, it weighs less. And, and, and they have a carbon cub. They're part of the Cub Crafters family. You know, a couple others. I called up Sean McLaughlin up at uh, Alaska Airframes. Said, Sean, I heard you have this new titanium tail spring that you're maybe not telling the world about yet, but uh, I'm doing this project and with these guys and we need lightweight. And so, uh, man, the next day there was a titanium tail spring heading my way. 
uh, that came down here, that's on this airplane. He said that, uh, Brad, you know, we build Alaska bush wheels for every airplane all over the world, uh, but we'd like to build you some special ones for this airplane, and we'll take some extra weight out of, out of them. We're not gonna give you a warranty for long-term <laughs> use in the back country, um, but we can help you save some weight there too. So I think they saved us eight pounds with the, with the custom tires on this airplane. I called up uh, Matt McSwain with Acme Aero, said, Matt, um, we're doing this thing. You've got your titanium uh, main gear landing gear. How long is it gonna take me to get a set of that? He said, well, you know, I think we're back ordered for six months or something. Um, I said, no, 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 I need some in two weeks. Uh, we gotta get it to the factory, get it covered, get it down to Mike. Uh, he came through, they built a custom set of shocks for this airplane that are tuned specifically for the weight of this airplane and its pilot. And I mean, you were just bragging on those shocks today. The airplane just comes to a stop and doesn't bounce and, bounce and plants. So that's key to this whole thing. There were a lot of people that aren't here today that helped us put this whole project together, so. Yeah, for sure. So all of you, Everyone we mentioned, and those that we may have forgotten, because there are so many that just helped in little ways all over the place. Thank you guys. We love you guys. Big shout out. Yes, it, it took an entire team, this team and a whole group of people behind the camera and a whole group of people from all over the country and on this project around the entire world. It took a global effort to build an extreme aircraft in a short period of time so that we can air freight across the country to Dubai and play. And that's what we're about to do. Are you guys ready? Yeah, look out for us, because it's going to be awesome. I think we also need to uh, need to do a shout out to Red Bull. Uh, Red Bull's a key part of this whole project. Um, they sponsor dreams of guys like Luke, guys like Mike. Um, Red Bull, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Cheers. 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 <laughs> You know, you're absolutely right. What Red Bull has done for aviation is unbelievable. Red Bull gives you wings, and they have been supporting athletes like Luke as far back as I can remember. When Red Bull came out and that slogan came out, I couldn't believe what a great company to get involved to help athletes like Luke and others all over the world in, in everything from aviation to cars. They have just been a support to guys' dreams. Absolutely. Dreams like yours. You come up with an idea and with, with partners like you guys, all of us, Red Bull, and you know, you make the idea fly and give us wings and we, we can do awesome stuff like that. Yeah, so Red Bull, thank you for supporting all of us that love to do unique, wild things because uh, I can tell you right now, I've met an army of Red Bull athletes that tell me the only reason they get to do and follow their dreams is because you helped them, you supported them, and we love you for that. Keep doing it, keep doing what you do. We love you, Red Bull. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers, Red Bull. Cheers, Red Bull.